isolated and kind of just were there. The Chinese weren't isolated. Well, they were more isolated, but they didn't have the printing press to spread the information around. When Columbus got to America and said there's mountains of gold, even though there weren't, that spread all, like wildfire through all, all of your, oh, we got to get that gold. I mean, who doesn't like gold? Well, why do we like gold? We talked about that in the first semester. Because it's nice and showing you how rich you are. It, uh, just to review why they like gold, why gold become valuable, it doesn't tarnish. It's relatively easy to move, and it's plentiful, but not terribly plentiful. All the other metals, iron rusted, tin, brittle, silver, tarnished, mercury, liquid, I know poisonous, lead too soft. Oh, and copper tarnishes. Gold does not do that, so it became a way to store value. Yeah? Did they use silver for currency? Sure, but it's tarnished. So that's why gold was more valuable. Okay. I'm guessing silver was kind of more of a temporary kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we got the maps. Do we get this? This is probably where we quit, right? So let's do this real quick. Spice trade. And so the spice trade was becoming a booming trade, triggered a lot, a lot of ways by the Crusades. When, the, when Europeans came here to try to conquer this area, the Holy Land failed, but it got them a taste for the spices. And the thing about the spice trade was it either went over the Silk Road to the Black Sea in this way, which by the way, that's how the plague was spread on the Silk Road and then here, or via the sea, they get up the Red Sea, cross over the Nile, and then up here. Yeah. Why is it called the Silk Road? Because so much silk from China went on. Okay. That was such a valuable commodity. By the way, China is rebuilding it now with railroads and a multi-lane highway. They are spending a lot on here to try to dominate trade in this area. And so with this, the Ottoman Empire right here controlled that trade. The Ottoman Empire. I think I put a slide here. Maybe I just talked about it. Yeah, the Ottoman Empire. And so the Ottoman Empire, if you look at that map over there, that's 1740, but the Ottoman Empire was massive. And so all trade had to go through the Ottoman Empire and then to the rest of Europe. And if you look up here really quick, here's Venice and Genoa. They were maritime powers in the Mediterranean, trading powers, and they had trade agreements with the Ottomans. And so, all spice that went to the rest of Europe, it had to go through various people to get to the Ottomans and then to Venice in general. Italian city strips. And so what we have there for are middlemen. The middlemen. And what do the middlemen do to prices of goods that people want? Yes. Well, tax, yeah, raise them. They set them up. So that's exactly it. They just keep jacking the price. By the way, that's what's happening now. Has anyone ever, have, have you ever been to a store? And you know, food prices, prices are going up, especially like meat prices. I'm trying to buy a single bag of burritos, like five bucks. And that's why the middlemen, the farmers are getting more money, but it's the fruit processors of the food that are, they're gouging the farmers and then they jack the price. You know, their profits for, um, for meat packers, the four biggest in the United States, have gone up 100% in the last year. So you want to know why meat prices are high? Because they can raise the prices. Does that mean like double the price? Yeah. Their profits have doubled. Maybe not the price hasn't doubled, but their profits have. Because they've also gouged farmers. Well, that's what Bennett, they two countries were doing. So they want to cut out the middlemen. So let's say you're someplace else in Europe. Why don't we find our own route to China? Or India? Or what is now Indonesia? Why don't we do it? And if you're a country like Portugal, we become the middleman and we gouge. Next, massive technological developments. Huge technological changes happened in this era. And firearms are happening. Firearms, like cannon, was still were used in the Hundred Years' War back in the 14th century. 
but they're starting to get better cannon and then a musket they could carry. It's called the wheel lock right here, or an arquebus. And this wheel, they would kind of crank it like this, pull the trigger, and that would create a spark that would ignite the gunpowder. So the beginnings of a modern musket and rifle. Now, they weren't very accurate, they had all kinds of problems, but boy, were they loud. And you know, they're accurate to maybe 20 yards. They would never actually put in one musket ball. They'd put in like four or five, so you're going to hit something. Isn't that kind of similar to a blunderbuss? Yeah. Like a blunder bus? That's exactly what a blunderbuss is. A blunderbuss is normally like a little bit bigger, but it's the same kind of thing. And so, like, even by the Revolutionary War, they're called the buck and shot. Three bullets instead of one, because you got to hit, hit something. It's just harder to load. But it's not just that. You're also having new ships with cannon. I didn't, I thought I got that in. But cannon on the side. So please write down better cannon. Lighter cannon, they can fire faster on these new kinds of ships, which I'll get to in just a second, that can take the recoil of the cannon. Now, they had gunpowder and they had cannon in, let's say, India and China. But since they weren't in the same kind of competition between other countries, they didn't develop it quite as fast. And so that gave Europeans a technological advantage. Let's say when the Portuguese arrived off India. Yeah. That's one thing when you get one big empire, they kind of dominate everybody else. For Europe, you have a bunch of smaller countries, so they're constant competition, so that encourages innovation. And then they have other navigational aids that are going to be massive. We've already talked about this is actually a map, it's one of the Portuguese maps, but better maps. They're going around Africa. The astrolabe, which by the way, that's where you use you hold up to try to find the North Star, and that will give you your latitude. A compass. Compass is relatively limited unless you have good maps in astrolabe. But if you have that, wow. The sextant would do the same thing. You hold it up to the sun. You find the angle of the sun, and that will give you your latitude. So let's look at this wonderful map here. They got the line mapped um, from Ptolemy. What lines are this? What are these lines? These are longitude. You can't figure out longitude unless you have a very good clock. And so they never knew the longitude until the end of the 18th century. So they had a watch that could be reliable. What line is they? And so what they would do is they would make a chart, and they literally went all the way up, as far north as they could. And at noon, they would write down the height of the sun at noon at that latitude. So you, everybody had this chart. And they would go, OK, I know the latitude, the height of the sun at this spot. Find it, boom, I'm right here. So that's what they knew, for example, Columbus. He knew the latitude here. So what did he do? Using a sextant. Actually, he probably used an astrolog because it would have better charts there. But he went down to the same latitude of, of India and just went across. And what did he find? Things here. And so that's how they did it up until the 19th century. Yeah. Maybe. We don't know. He might have thought he reached it, or he might have been thinking, I want to tell, I'm, my commission was to reach India, so I'm going to make it look like I reached India. But it's pretty certain he didn't, he thought the world was a third small. So he knew he probably wasn't there, but it was probably safe to say he thought, well, there must be other islands like here. But why call them Indians? So you can tell people back home, I, I didn't mean to. That's why. But we don't know. Columbus, this might shock you, lied about everything. Everything. And so, also a big one is social technology. The printing press. Double entry bookkeeping. 
or you put down two entries of bookkeeping where you put down your expenditures and how much money you have left. Hmm? DBL, double. Double entry bookkeeping. If you ever have to keep uh, your accounts in like your uh, a checkbook or a uh, credit card debt or something, you do double entry bookkeeping. I'm going to have to do that this weekend. I'm doing our taxes. And then a biggie, zero. I can't emphasize what a big deal the number zero was. Zero wasn't it? No. And so Roman numerals had got out of favor going into the new millennium. And they were using Arabic numbers. What are Arabic numbers? One through nine. Now they're on base 10. So just imagine using just one through nine, write a million. Write a million without zeros. Uh, nine, Do you see the problem? Nine, 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 nine. Now write a million without zeros and add 300,001 without zeros. Uh, I don't know how to They would actually kind of make these weird columns. They have, to have all kinds of columns and move things around. See what a big deal zero is? Yeah, you're kind of right. You would have to, it, it was really complex. You add zero, does it make sense now with a zero? You could do the math. Once you have a zero, what can you start doing? Adding big numbers. You could have big government taxes, big business, once you have a zero. It's something that just seems so basic to us right now. But like once you have it, like, oh, and the minds are rewired. Zeros. So now you can have an empire. Now you can be big. Now you can collect taxes. Now you know how much money. It looks like it's raining outside. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to get like a little half snow, half rain. It could be kind of a messy ooh, and wind, of course. And we'll be all week. There goes the howler monkeys. Howler monkeys are leaving again. Poor things. Next. They have the beginnings of a proto market economy. A market economy where prices are decided by supply and demand. Now, before we get to capitalism, what does that mean? Let's say it's a product that people want. What do all of you want? Freedom. You can't buy that. I can, I just have enough money. What can you buy? What do you want? I know what you all want. You want dry eraser pens, right? Oh, yeah, thanks. But there's only one pen, right? What happens to the price of dry eraser pins if I'm the only one selling it? It goes way up. I can break the price. But what are, what are you going to do? People are making money on dry eraser pins, and they increase the supply, and what happens to the price? It goes down. It goes down. So supply and demand, prices are decided in that market. That's the market. And we have the beginnings of capitalism, where one person has the means of production. The first capitalism would be like shipping, or the one that we really can see because it's a machine, the printing press. We're not quite to capitalism yet. Capitalism is a market that's not by supply and demand, but one person or entity, corporation, they own the means of production. They take the risk. If you're going to buy a company to make dry eraser pins, it's going to cost you a lot of money. But you get all the profits. So that is your incentive. There are incentives to make money. If there are incentives to make money, let's get our let's build some trading vessels, get an empire, make some money. You need workers there? Let's find something we could use our ships for to find workers, unpaid workers, to make money. Yes. Now, slavery has existed for a long time, but nothing like the slavery that's going to come. And so here's just a basic, this is supposed to be Antwerp trading. Oh no, that's, this is Prague. Yeah, that's Prague. That's the Great Bridge. Like a city. It was a growing trade center, yeah. Next, ideological. Ideologies are strongly held beliefs. I'll explain the picture in just a second. Yeah, I mean, the picture's pretty cool, right? We all have ideologies. We all have certain things we believe. And the important thing is that we believe it. 
And that's, it might have not have anything to do with facts. It is true to us because we believe it. These are things that we take as true, and these are like values. And you can find a lot of ideology, like uh, different views on the creation of the planet, or you know, think, talk about things today would be ideology about your attitude towards having uh, personal firearms, or or maybe abortion, or maybe um, heck, wages or business control. I mean, these are ideologies. And like I said, I'll tell you about that in a second. And so. In the church, being rich, a.k.a. greed, for much of the time of the, of the Christian church was seen as a major sin. This went against everything about the New Testament of Christianity. Remember, we got to talk a lot about the Christian church. Yes, we have the Reformation going on, but the church. In fact, that is why there were laws all over Europe against your usury. Anybody know what usury is? That's if you loan money, it's really high interest rates. There are laws against really high interest rates. Hey, if somebody comes to you want to borrow money, they're desperate. Probably. They need something. So you can charge higher interest. It's way to cheat someone. We see here, have you ever been to a pawn shop or one of those payday loan places? They loan you money at pawn shop. You get your stuff, you loan it, and you get a little bit of money from it. And they charge 100% interest, compounded continuously. Some that's 200. I was reading about some in Florida are four or 500% interest rates. Because people are desperate. So the church said that's wrong. But you can see this with the Reformation. You can see this with other things going on. But especially the Crusades. The Crusades seemed to change this a little bit. When they said, you can go to heaven, not so much based upon certain actions, but if you do what? We're not quite to pay yet. It's to kill infidels. We kill infidels, we're going to heaven. We take from them, we're going to heaven. Yeah, Pope Urban II was quite the character. Well, that, and then the development of humanism. And this idea that humans were given um, the power to set the world, make it for themselves, and human values. Well, why shouldn't we get wealthy? Get this, Danny? Yeah, why shouldn't we get wealthy? Humanism. And so this, actually, I think I have. And so ideology changed into a greed as well. And we can see this then with the Puritans and the Calvinists. We're greedy, we get wealth, that proves that either we are doing the most we can on this earth, and then we have God's blessing. This is a big shift. So hey, let's get money. So here is a picture, and it's supposed to be an allegory of knights as big bugs now, basically conquering and pillaging and taking everything they can. Yeah. I was going to say should or want. That's what I was trying to say, but I blanked as soon as you called my name. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We've all done that. That means God, I forgot to say that. And then the last thing. In fact, we're going to stop right there. So we'll come back to the nation states because that's set right up in Spain. So I'll give you the rest of the period to read 33. Also, take out your review list. If you have any questions about that early stuff, uh, for the test, the test, I'm still looking. Over half the class gone today. Wait, where, why is there no one going over here? We have speech and debate. There's a field trip, there's wrestling, there's set swimming, um, I I didn't even go swimming. basketball. I didn't even go swimming. It's already raining. Yeah. The thing about that is it's literally at like 32, 33 degrees. That is sweet, not snow. It's, it's going to be a little slippery this evening. It's going to take a long drive. So, I'll give you time to read 13.3 or go ahead and study. Oh, you finished doing Like it? Yeah. I did a long time ago. I like it. I heard the movie was uh, okay. I 
like the one that you just gave out. Yeah. Definitely better than the other one. I saw the rig, the one that was made whenever, like mid eighties, in the theater. Yeah. And I was that the one yeah, that I had done. <laughs> <laughs> There's good parts of it, but it didn't work. Is that the one that the big plate is hard? Wait, what? Yeah, he's in it. Yeah. Before before Star Trek finished generation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It must have been eighty four. <laughs> Not a long yeah, it just it didn't work. It's a hard it'd be a hard story to make a movie. Okay, so you can read 13.3. I believe the, the chapter is in if you go to teens, or you can uh, or study. Sound good? It is harder than this. Cool. Is it working? Oh, we dropped the phone. Oh, we decided it's going to be kind of hard to make the change of it. I'm filming us reading. I don't think I need to film. <laughs> <laughs> 